We'll now go ahead and give uh, a signed in user the ability to change their profile details. So for example, at the moment, the only thing that we can really give the user the ability to change is their uh, username or their, sorry, their name, so their full name. So most of the functionality uh, already exists um, to do this. We don't actually need to develop much new functionality because we have a validation class. We have the ability to check if a user is signed in or not. We have form tokens, we have um, input helpers, validation helper, um, and the ability to pass the user back to the home page to tell them that they, their details have been updated. We don't actually have a lot to do here. Um, so let's go ahead and actually just start to build this up and work out how easy it is to use everything that we've already put together. So I'm going to go ahead and require uh, on the uh, update.php page uh, the initialization file for our code. I'm then going to say user equals new user. And from this, I can determine if the user's logged in or not. Now, if they're not logged in, I want to redirect them back to the home page. I could even redirect them to a 404 page, um, but that's probably not very helpful. So um, what I now want to do is, um, in fact, before we do anything here, let's go ahead and just build our form. So our method, as usual, is going to be post, and uh, inside here, all we're really going to allow the user to update at the moment is their uh, their name. So I'm going to say label, in fact, no, div class equals field. And uh, let's go ahead and create a label for their name. Uh, this will just be name. And then input for their name as well. So that's obviously going to be text. The name is going to be just name, um, and the value here is going to be their current name. So we want to we want to put this in here as well. Obviously, we want to escape it, escape, escape, using uh, the function that we've already created, and we want to grab the data and we want to grab their name. Okay, so uh, we obviously need an input field here, and we want the value of this just to be update. And we also want a token as well. We've already looked at token functionality. So the value here is just going to be echo token generate. Lovely. So let's go ahead and preview this in our browser. In fact, let's create a link here to just, you know, give the, give it the ability for the user to click this. Uh, it just makes a little more sense. So let's just duplicate this and we'll just say update details or something. And this will be update.php. So now that we're on the home page and we are signed in, we click update details and we get this page here, the ability to enter a name and, uh, and also update. So we click update and that, that data is submitted. So um, now that we have uh, our form created, we can start to check whether we have any input. We can check whether the token exists, uh, if that's if that's a correct token or not, to prevent uh, cross-site request forgery. So we're going to say if input exists, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to check if the token that's been supplied uh, is the same, or we want to check that's the same as the session. So we have a, uh, a method to do that, and we pass in input get token. Um, if that's the case, then cool, we'll just echo out OK for now, just so we can see that this has worked. So let's go ahead and update. OK, so perfect. We, uh, we know that that's worked. So now we want to go ahead and validate stuff. And this is really important because we want to validate it to the same standards we validated it as we registered a, a user. So we want to say validate equals new validate. And we want to say validation equals validate check. Now we want to check the post data. And we have an array of rules, as we already know. And we only have one field here. So let's say name. 
and we obviously need to define whether it's required which is true because we required it for registration so why wouldn't we require it for an update we want a minimum value which was 2 and we want a maximum value which was 50 and that's it so we then check if the validation has passed uh, so if validation passed we want to go ahead and update otherwise we want to loop through the errors that we're returned so for each validation errors as error we want to echo out the error and depend on a line break so it's functionality that we've already built we know exists in our application so we don't need to to worry about it so if I get rid of this and click update name is required if I put my name as a it says name must be a minimum of two characters um, you know so we, we've included all of this functionality already it, it you know it's nothing new to us we're just using uh, our application as we know that we've built it so we're gonna have a try um, block with a catch um, and the reason for this is that we're going to actually throw an exception inside of our user method um, where, if this fails, uh, or basically if the database operation fails. So we have an exception here, E, and we want to die E get message. Uh, by the way, I haven't explained this, but this get message method is just part of uh, the exception, um, an exception object in, in PHP. So there's no, there's, this isn't something that we are actually building. Now we're going to introduce a new method on the user object. We've already um, instantiated this. So all we really need to do is pass or call this update method, which we haven't created yet, so we're not to confuse. Um, and with this functionality, we want to pass a list of elements that we want to update and their values. So name is going to be input get name. That's all we need to do. So we've now completed this functionality. But we need to go back now and retrospectively create this update method. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll head over to our user, um, our user class, um, and we'll go ahead and create a new method here. Now this method isn't going to do, you know, isn't going to do too much uh, work because we already have the ability to update using our um, our uh, database. So we're going to create an update method. And this is going to take in obviously the fields and by default that's going to be an empty array if that's not being defined. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, fill this in but there's a little caveat here because we we need to um, call the um, update method on the database object. So let's just do that quickly and then see what kind of problem we may potentially face. Um, so I'm going to say if if not this db update users with a specific ID with the fields uh, then we want to throw a new not thrown throw a new exception and we just want to say there was a problem updating okay so we need to get this ID from somewhere um, and what we could do is we could just say um, ID equals this data ID, but um, we want to make sure that this uh, functionality doesn't break if there's there's not an ID available for whatever reason. Um, so therefore, it probably a good idea to be to sort of bake this into our update method as a second um, optional uh, property uh, parameter, um, so we can update other records as well. For example, if we had a user panel or an admin panel, sorry, and an admin panel allowed a, an admin to update a user's data, we'd want to define an ID because we wouldn't necessarily want to get the admin's ID and update it like that. So here what we can do is we can say if there's no ID being defined and this user is logged in, then we want the ID to be this data ID now otherwise by default this ID will be um, the, the ID that we specify so if we were to say here update user ID of 4 this block won't run and then we'll update here with a user ID of 4 now, if we don't supply this it will update the current users um, ID which is what we want uh, otherwise the functionality would be useful we're not actually going to include this in in this application so um, I'm going to go ahead and change my name to just Alex. I'm going to update this. 
um, and it looks like that worked, but obviously we have a few redirection issues there. We'll, we'll deal with them in a moment once we've updated successfully. If we browse here, you can see that my name has been changed to Alex. So the functionality works as we would expect. We've already we already built the database functionality, so there's no reason it wouldn't work. Um, so once we've updated a, a user uh, a user's um, information, let's go ahead and session flash home your details have been updated um, and we'll go ahead and we'll redirect obviously to the home page so uh, now what's going to happen is when we update I'll switch back to Alex Garrett I'll click update um, your details have been updated and then uh, you know that they're, they're changed. So we've not really introduced any new functionality here. We've seen all this before, but what we've done is married it all together um, to mean that we can actually, you know, build on the functionality we've created. That's why we've created the application in this way. So that's basically how uh, you'd update a user's uh, details. If you were to update, say, a name and you wanted to allow uh, more to be updated, you just need to define it in here and in here. That's all we really need to do.